everyone, Jared Wickler Barbary in beautiful historic Philadelphia and I have the pleasure of being here with Alan Robson, CEO of the Northampton States of the Aviva Premiership and the Heineken Cup. Alan, good to have you here. JW hyphen B, it's Saints, not States. It's Saints, not States. I beg your pardon. No problem. The Saints are my favorite team in the Premiership, specifically because you're on camera with me. Um, but uh, Dylan Hartley received the red card. Is the red card bad for business in rugby? Rugby is about integrity and honesty in, in all respects, and including the way you play the game on the pitch. And um, we have yellow cards and we have red cards, as you very well know. A yellow card says you've been a bad lad. That's not good enough. Get off the pitch for 10 minutes. A red card is if you've been particularly naughty. You have to have regulations. Otherwise, people will go running around doing what they want and getting no comeuppance. It's about accountability. And I spoke to Dylan afterwards, but the fact is someone has to become the arbiter. I was ticked off. Uh, and so were we. And so was everyone else. However, what you saw was a characterful performance from the Saints after that with 14 men. And, and it, there was even almost more drama because of that, I think. Is a bit of an acrimonious relationship between the teams and the RFU. Acrimonious is, is, is a word that I, I can't go with. Uh, I can. On, on camera. But um, I think an what, uncomfortable what term, what relationship uncomfortable? perhaps is, is, a, is a better... Uncomfortably acrimonious? Just uncomfortable. <laughs> just uncomfortable. Um, I think you've got to understand, you know, rugby's been around for an awful long time. But professional rugby has only been in being since 96, 97. Prior to that, the RFU controlled the game in every single respect. Once it became professional, people are putting their own money in and they want to control what happens where they put that money. We're dealing with one set of players. They play for me on a Saturday and they play for England so many times a year. That, that's a conflict. And perhaps the British and Irish Lions. And, and perhaps, well, if you don't get silly, yeah. Yeah. If you don't get a red card. Yet the Rory Bests of the world are doing cartwheels over that red card, aren't they? They are, absolutely. <laughs> and so is Tom Young's, I think, as well, <laughs> who was one of the bad lads. Do you think that maybe um, one of those fellas was a ventriloquist and they were on the pitch at the same time yes. and had... Yes, I do. Yes. I do. So it was a ventriloquist, not Dylan Hotley, that cussed or cussed or whatever you want. or Allegedly. 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 Relegation promotion. The American audience is not really familiar with this, but it's one of the best things in sports, really. Your team does poorly, they get dumped to the minor leagues. First team in the minor leagues gets promoted, which makes every game pretty much important. It must be very difficult to get relegated, not only for the club, but for like the city, because merchandising isn't as important if you're a second tier team. We were relegated only six or seven years ago. Everyone said it's not possible. Northampton Saints are one of the greats, not possible. But we went. People cry on the last day of the season when they get relegated and you're over the moon when you get promoted. Sure. We're a strong club, so our average attendance of about 13,300 then we only reduced to 11,500. At that point, our 11,500 every week was still the second highest attendance in the whole country, bearing in mind we were in the second division at that point. We learned an awful lot about ourselves and come back stronger, and here we are fairly much in the finals. But some clubs go down and can't get back up. They don't have the financial wherewithal. Um, players don't want to stay around. Is there an exit, uh, stra uh, exit rule in their contract if you get relegated that they can leave? There could be, but there generally isn't. They often want to offload those players that cost too much. Right. Um, and the players are quite happy to run away. Salary anyway. dump? Absolutely. We didn't do that. What is the salary cap? £4.26 million. Pounds. Which in so I guess is that $5.5 million to you guys? You're the CEO. Very roughly then. <laughs> um, it's the salary and it's the on costs, such as the agent's fee that, that we pay for him, the national insurance contributions, any pension uh, uh, relocation expenses. So any expense that we give to a player is in the salary cap. So what we're hearing here right now for all the boys and girls in the homes and the orphanages across the globe... Forget about playing rugby, forget about the professional sports, musicians, anything. Be an accountant for the Premiership League. No comment. <laughs> Your club is doing very well financially. Yeah, which helps be a success on the pitch. So you could probably afford a good spokesperson. <coughs> yes. John McLeod Barbary for Rugby Wrap-Up in Philadelphia, signing off.